Hello. So I know this is uh, Node one shot, but I'm not going to talk about Node at all. I'm going to talk about SVGs. They're really fun. So here's a wiz whoa. Here's a wizard. Um, you can do some really fun things with SVGs. Like for example, uh, just to give you a little bit of a taste about what this presentation will be like. Uh, so I've done a little bit of trickery so that I have the SVG variable always available and I can do things like query selector G and that gives me a handle on this wizard. Then I can do things like, well once I save that, I can do things like set interval, um, save that interval and then I can do g.set attribute. And then I can do translate or transform rather, and I'll I'll be explaining all of this uh, in just a few moments. So if I do like uh, x plus maybe y and yeah, that should work every 16 milliseconds. 16 is kind of a magic number in animation. It's uh, 60 FPS. Set interval is terrible, by the way. Don't, don't use that except in demos. Um, so if we have our x, then we can do maybe math.sign of x plus 100 maybe times uh, 200, whatever. That might work. Maybe not. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Oh, right. It's really hard to get all the parens lined up, but... Oh, yep. Wait, what? Okay. Set attribute, translate, plus, and then this crazy math crap, and then plus... And then, oh, I see. Wait. Plus... Quote... Yep. Yeah. There we go. So... Uh, now it's not even doing anything, but whatever, that's okay. We won't. I'm not gonna gonna labor that. Anyways, so about me, I'm Substack on the internet or James Halliday. I live in Oakland, California. I don't really work on anything. I'm just slowly running out of money, but I'm working on these projects right now. They're really fun. So I'll probably just keep doing that for a while. So here's here's a great riff on CJ's uh, talk yesterday. So her talk was about surviving Gall's Law, but I like how I survived Murphy's Law because lately uh, everything has been going wrong that could possibly go wrong because it's a law. It's not an adage. It's the law. So I'm very sick right now, for example. I've been going to the toilet very frequently and like feeling really terrible. Uh, my Linux system completely broke yesterday when I tried to install a Wacom driver, like a single package in Debian, just like completely fucked the entire system and just destroyed X, destroyed my Wi-Fi. I had to rebuild everything from scratch. I, I managed to somehow get this all running, which is kind of amazing. Um, I'm in a strange country where I don't speak the language. I wrote my own slide viewer right before my talk, which you absolutely should not do. And I'm about to do a lot of live coding. So inside the presentation software, aforementioned. <laughs> What could go wrong? <laughs> okay, so let's open up the debugger. Uh, some fun stuff we can do with SVG. I mean, the wizard didn't work very well, but that's all right. So another thing we can do is if I get a query selector on this, this pony, um, rotations are a little bit easier. So if we have an angle that starts at zero, and I'll make an interval that has a callback, of course, and now we can do set attribute. Actually, the thing I didn't do with a wizard, I should do here. So uh, SVGs are kind of cool. They have this transform thing that I'll be talking about in just a little bit, but copy paste to the rescue. Uh, as it, It's a very, very useful uh, trick, copy paste. I don't know if you, maybe you've used it. I like it, it's pretty good. So now we can set an angle and we can create our interval again uh, with our function and g.set attribute transform. And then we can do the previous transform value plus a space and then another one for rotation. Rotate, but you have to spell everything correctly. So that's a little bit tricky. So if I do uh, math.sign of a over five, or a plus plus over five, so a will increment uh, and times five. 
So if I do all of that, and if I match up the parenthesis exactly correctly, including in quotes, because SVG is weird like that, uh, then 16, we get a dancing pony. Very good. Cool, so what else can we do? Uh, well, so my introduction to SVG, uh, actually, so I started learning it kind of on my own when I was cabin sitting in a dry cabin, which means it doesn't have any plumbing in Alaska for a summer because my friend was going to New York and he didn't want his brother to move into the cabin. So I'm like, yes, free rent <laughs> in a cabin. It was great though. It was, it, was a, it was not that long of a bike ride to university where I was working. So I taught myself uh, Inkscape because I didn't have internet out there. There's not a whole lot you can do. I didn't want to always bike into campus. Um, so one of the projects I was on shortly after I had just learned Inkscape was to build this underwater RV uh, system. So here's the tech report from that. Uh, a fun thing you can do, so this image right here is actually uh, a circuit. That's a real circuit board that was actually made and I drew it with Inkscape which is a vector graphics program. You, you shouldn't actually use Inkscape for this purpose, but you can. <laughs> um, so Inkscape, uh, if you haven't used it, it looks like this. It's pretty good open source, aka free. Uh, graphics program. Um, so here's what that looks like. This is a, an acid bath. It's hydrochloric acid. You can buy it at a, any hardware store pretty much. And you can print out your circuit board design onto magazine paper, use some iron to transfer it onto copper, ca uh, copper clad fiberglass boards. This is just some A4 board and you can make a circuit. Great. Um, oh, here's what the RV looks like. There's a lot of junk in here. That's what it looked like. It's pretty cool. We actually completely redesigned it in the last week because it, we couldn't see what we were doing, but it worked great. So we should Inkscape a little bit. So basically how it goes is you use the pencil tool because that's pretty much the only thing that I use. I'm just using my mouse right now because I don't have uh, my Wacom tablet with me, but you know, you can draw a robot or whatever. It's like, we're something like that. You know, whatever. You draw some stuff, you can fill stuff, select a color. It's pretty great. It's pretty easy to get started. It's pretty intuitive, I think. Uh, the nice thing about Inkscape is you can export as SVG. In fact, that's the default kind of file in Inkscape. So it's all vectors. And vectors are very nice because they are DOM elements in browsers. DOM elements mean that you can basically change everything. So if you saw Jen Schiffer's talk uh, at Web Ripples about she was using CSS to do everything in HTML, well, it's a little bit easier, it's a little bit more cheating to use SVG because you can just draw what you want and then animate it. Um, so here is what a circle looks like, for example. There is a, literally a circle tag, and if you you want to change it, you can just get a handle on the circle tag. We can query selector, we can do a set attribute, most of the things that you, you're familiar with with HTML. So if we do a circle, then it's that circle. We can uh, change the radius with set attribute, for example. So if we want to make it bigger, make it like 500. And then it clips, but you know, you get the idea. Uh, so what else? Well, there's fill, which is the solid color. There's stroke, which is the border color. Stroke width, which is basically border radius. Uh, there's probably fancy stuff, but I don't, I don't know what it is. So you can look that up. Um, here's uh, some other parameters the circle has. So there's like radius, center, x, y, you know, whatever. There's also rectangles. So this one has a, a fill and a stroke, but you might notice something like, oh, that, yeah, I remember XHTML. If you forget to put that, here's what it looks like. <laughs> this page contains an error and it, and the browser will throw an absolute fit at you. So you have to be this kind of XML extremist if you want to write SVG by hand. Uh, luckily, Inkscape just does it all correctly, so I'd recommend just doing that. Um, 
things that might waste your time with SVGs. So if you don't put an XML NS namespace tag in the SVG tag, nothing will work pretty much, or it will blow up in strange ways without any errors. Uh, and also image clipping and a bunch of XML nonsense. Like if you forget to quote something, it all falls apart. Uh, anyways, some more some more handy tags. So there's text. Uh, really fun thing you can do with text. Uh, I don't know if you've ever used HSL color space before. It's really handy because it's basically an angle around the color wheel as the first parameter. That's the hue. So like 0 to 360. Then you have uh, saturation and luminosity. So if we keep the saturation and luminosity constant and we use uh, an angle that just keeps going around the color wheel, we can make a pretty cool effect. So if I query selector for the text element, like so, uh, and save that, so call it txt, then we can make another interval, send interval function, and now we can have our parameter a, and we can do text.set attribute, uh, how about fill? Uh, we could also set the stroke if we wanted, and we can do uh, hsl to rgb, for a plus plus uh, maybe times four uh, modulo 360 I think that'll work and then if I do 50 100 that might possibly work if I exactly match up all of the parentheses and do everything correctly sweet it does great so you can pretty pretty easily and pretty trivially make sweet flashy graphics sweet like rainbow images and stuff you don't even have to bust out uh, like a gif create or whatever, but that's also fun. Um, cool. So let me make sure my event loop doesn't get pegged the whole presentation. There we go. All right. So that's text and HSL color space, all kind of fun stuff. Um, so I was using the transform attribute a little bit already. How this works is you can set, oh, the first one should actually say translate, uh, but you can set translations, you can set scales, you can do rotations. Uh, you, if you also have a computer matrix, you can just pass in a matrix uh, as a string, which is kind of weird and probably really inefficient compared to something like WebGL, but whatever, this stuff is pretty easy, so who cares? Uh, so here's an example of translate. So the, the cyan circle is without a translation, and the purple is just translated uh, 30 right and 20 down pixels. Um, you know, not much to say there. There's also scales. You can make stuff squished. There's also rotation. Here's an example of that. Uh, that's what I was doing with the pony. And I, I, actually, why don't we just do that again? Because I've, I've got that code handy in my history here. So let's see. Yeah, this is it. So uh, if we just set that to nothing, actually, I'll just do this. So we have our, our rectangle, and we want to make it animate. So we just need to svg.query selector for the rectangle instead of the pony. And also, yeah, cool. It, it, it looks like it's really more interesting than it is just because it's clipping on the top, but whatever. It's pretty cool. Ah. So clear interval that. And we can move on to the next thing. So there's also groups. So this is more like you're used to with a traditional uh, box model where you have like a div, like multiple things inside of it. And then if you move the parent div, everything under it moves as well. So that's a handy way if you have a bunch of items that are grouped and you want them to move all at once. Um, there's also path. And this starts getting into some really interesting territory. Um, so there's this whole little meta language uh, that you specify with a D attribute um, on a path tag, or there's a similar thing, I think, for some, some other pieces of SVG. But so uh, this is a whole little language that basically just says, like, pencil down at 100, 100, and then draw a line to 300, 100, and draw another line, and then go to the end uh, with the, the pencil up again. Um, so that's what we've done here with the triangle. Uh, here's the, the complete language. Um, it's got a lot of stuff like some curves. It's got some weird like quadratic Bezier curves and fun things. So uh, 
there's also so this language is pretty cool. I'll come I'll come back to this in just a little bit, but um, spoiler, you can use it like a plotter. So, anyways. Uh, there's also a polygon tag, and that, that is a little bit easier to understand because you can just look at the coordinates and their, their absolute coordinates. So you can just look at the pairs and like here we draw a hexagon and make it lime. Uh, there's also polylines, which are like a polygon, but it doesn't fill it in completely. So the polylines are really good for graphs. So if you want to make something like an interactive graph that scrolls across the screen, you just like set attribute an array of points dot join on space and it's, it'll just keep going if you position it and that kind of stuff. So uh, you can also dynamically construct all of this stuff. But spoiler alert, it's horrible. Uh, you have to use this thing. You can't just use document.createElement like normal. You have to do document.createElementNS, short for namespace, and then it's... So we want an SVG tag, right? But then you have to specify this like W3 URL. And if you don't put that, nothing will work. Um, and it won't even tell you that it didn't work. It just won't work at all. And you'll be completely puzzled as to why. So you have to do this element NS junk. Um, and so, but otherwise, you can pretty much do what you're used to. You can set like dot style att attributes, or you could call set attribute, um, like clone node. Most, most everything you'd expect out of DOM nodes works the same except for the weird NS business, which is just really strange. You can also register um, like click events and all mouse overs, whatever you want. So, uh, so if you don't want to remember the NS thing, I wrote a stupid little module on NPM called SVG create element that does that for you. Uh, you, can, you can put SVGs in an, IMG, in an IMG tag on a page, but the problem is you can't modify them once you've done that. It's sort of inaccessible to your page at that point. So if you want to load an SVG onto your page, you can use like an XHR library, and then you can do all of this garbage where you like create a div and then insert it and whatever. Or there's another module for that that just does what I just showed. It's like 10 lines or something, but it, it's nicer to look at. So the other thing, I've been using set interval for a lot of these little ad hoc demos, but that's kind of a bad idea. So the way that is much more performant is to use window.requestAnimationFrame, which tries to keep your animations running smoothly at 60 FPS. And it doesn't like stack up in weird ways and fall over like set interval does. So to, to use it, all that you have to do is you call window.requestAnimationFrame with a function, like loop. And then inside of that loop, you, you call window.requestAnimationFrame again. And then the window will defer that rendering until it's sort of been 60 frames per second-ish enough time, and it kind of handles that for you. Uh, but so usually for this kind of stuff, I mean, not always, but sometimes you want to have a time delta. This is like the, the time in milliseconds that's elapsed since the last frame that you drew. I mean, it's nice if you can get away from that and use absolute time, but you can't always do that. So here's a handy little snippet for doing that. But um, if you don't want to do that, I've got this module called frame loop. Um, there's also, I should mention, a really nice module called RAF, R-A-F, that just is a sort of, does all of the weird vendor prefixes for request animation frame for you. Um, this one called frame loop though is kind of it's kind of fun because you can do things like call set interval and it actually uses the request animation frame loop which um, is handy for the last thing that I'll show but I'm, I'm not going to spoil that one quite yet. Um, so some more things that you might want to consider for doing SVG wacky stuff. Um, there's implement some basic physics that's, you know, maybe that's not 100% correct, but whatever. It looks pretty good. That's the most important thing about SVGs. Um, I've got a module box sprite SVG that you can use, like here, this little demo just like uses the arrow keys and you can move a player around. So, uh, yeah, I will talk a little bit more about this in a moment. I'm going to skip over this stuff. So, here's a wacky idea. What if you could just draw with Inkscape a game and then you just like write some JavaScript and make it work but you don't need to like make a bunch of assets and then put them in a directory and then like load them all up separately so 
the nice thing about SVG is you don't really need an ed a level editor if you can just use Inkscape for that. And in fact, you can just, uh, if you do Control Shift O, you can set object properties. So this is, uh, this is literally the ID. Um, so you can just use document.query selector, like pounds, and then that name, and you'll get that element. It's really nice um, to do for games. So, well, I've done that. So here's a game that I made with an SVG. So this is, I'll, I'll, I'll prove this for real. Um, oh crap, I put it in another directory. So this game is called Wall Street Panic. It's based on a, a fake video game that was in a uh, was in a music video by Disaster Radio, and Dominic Tarr helped with the production and is in it. Um, it's pretty fun. Right. So here is that file, and it's literally like this is the player ID. So I can do document query selector player, and there's like a, even the font. I did all of these numbers, and then I just moved them around. That was probably the hardest part of this game was just like doing the retro font. Um, the rest was pretty straightforward. You just like take this dollar sign and you move it around, whatever. With JavaScript. So here is that game in action. So you just use the arrow keys, it's using those box sprite modules that I was just talking about. You're a banker and you've got to avoid all of the riffraff, wants to take your money. If they don't actually, they hardly take any money because those those dollar signs are like between five and ten million dollars and it's just, it's not going to make a difference. <laughs> just like real life. Um, a good thing is uh, because we're using uh, frame loop, I can just hit F1 and it pauses the game, and you can also restart it, so you don't have to muck about with that kind of state stuff. I don't know. It's kind of nice if you want to, if you want to use that. Um, so, just as a, a last example, I can just bring up that uh, directory. One sec. Oh, wait a sec. It's right here. This is the SVG. Duh. So here I have the SVG, right? So I can do dot query selector player, just like I was saying. Uh, that's the player right there. So now, if I want to move him around, I can do, I'll save it first. And maybe I'll do uh, player. So we have this transform matrix, unfortunately. So a nice, a nice way to get around that is to make a fake uh, G tag that just uh, takes over the, the transform stuff, and then you make one underneath of it to do another transformation. Um, I guess I won't do that, but here I can just set something arbitrary instead. So just like do transform, maybe like uh, translate uh, 0, 100 that and now it's off the screen so luckily we can just mouse over we can see it's over here and maybe do uh, like 500 instead there we go now he's gigantic <laughs> um, if we want to move him around we can now make a little bit of a loop uh, maybe just have an a value and then we can set an interval like before uh, it doesn't take a parameter, so now we can set the transform to be... Instead of 500, we can do uh, math.cosine, how about of a... Uh, and I'll modify a out here. Math.cosine of a uh, over 5, times 5 maybe. And for y, we can do... Uh, math.sign of the same thing, so hopefully that'll move him around in a circle. If we can even find him now. Oh, yeah, he's moving around, but I'll just fix that real fast, because this will be pretty cool. Um, yeah, so if we move the player a bit around, we should be able to see... And the other offset applied to the X. I think like plus 500. Yeah, see a little bit. Not good enough. Uh, 
let's see, oh, maybe minus 200? Yeah, there we go. Cool. You can like zoom in. So, thanks, that's all I have. Oh, actually, that's not true. I have one last thing, and it's really cool. So, at my hackerspace in Oakland, we have this giant industrial robot arm. It's about this tall. It used to weld bridges, and it, it's really dangerous. Of course, it's just set up where everybody is. It'll, but whatever. Um, so, using all using uh, all of these SVG libraries that I was just showing you, um, I made this little tool for generating uh, assembly code that the robot can use. Um, oh, hang on. I thought there were more slides about it. So if you upload an SVG, like I have this Apatosaurus uh, wireframe version of it that is quite good. So it simplifies the geometry using, of course, the Simplify Geometry module from NPM. And so I've got a little slider. And it, it uh, generates, uh, so it takes SVG, it linearizes it, so it reads in those uh, M, L, C stuff and just turns it into all line segments. And then we can see like the number of points, like 500. The robot can actually only, only uh, can only do 999 points. That's, that's the limit, not 1,000 for some reason. Um, so we can make it more coarse or more detailed. And then uh, you just copy paste this stuff and you feed it into a Python program that, that one of my friends wrote that mounts itself, it presents itself as a fake floppy disk because the robot was originally written to talk to a floppy disk, to load programs from a floppy disk. So we just have this computer hooked up over serial to this floppy disk. And so you can load on the really retro 90, or like 80s interface of like green phosphor screen, you push button. It's really horrible interface. I don't really remember how it works. But you can load uh, these programs and when you do that, they look like this. So this is a sped up version of what that assembly code <laughs> will generate. This is for a promotional video we made. We made probably about, I don't know, like 15 of those. Because why not? You can just crank them out if you have paper. <laughs> it's like zero effort. Anyways, okay, thanks. <laughs>